What's going on? Today I'm talking DJI FPV and this stuff, pretty awesome. Um, love it. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to check some of this uh, DJI FPV stuff out, now is the time. Um, you know, I put this drone together and I'll tell you a little bit about it, but the experience flying one of these versus a standard analog, it's it's really kind of amazing. And everybody that I've had the experience of sharing this with has been amazed. Um, so let's take a look at what this drone is and I'll show you a little bit of footage uh, and we'll talk a little bit about what it means to, to switch to this digital system. Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, so let's take a look at the system that we have here. First of all, um, DJI isn't selling drones, so you're gonna have to put these things together, uh, unfortunately. Now you can find some out there pre-built. Uh, they're expensive, and you know that's kind of the theme here with this DJI system is it is expensive. So what I got is the goggles, the remote, and an air unit. They call that the Fly More package, and that costs $929. Yeah, heavy chunk of change right off the start. And then you still have to build your drone. So this is the air unit here. Um, I went with an iFlight uh, DC5 frame. So this guy was actually built uh, for the DJI unit. And actually, initially, I bought a TBS Source 1 because you know, it was a big frame and I thought I could fit it in there. It was only $25. This one uh, is 50, but it was built for the DJI unit. And it turns out uh, that's almost pretty necessary because this unit is big um, and they give you some uh, 3D printed parts to kind of hold it in place there. So that was definitely useful. So I did end up switching to this frame. It is a really nice frame. Um, you can see here, good carbon fiber. Uh, I like the look of it, good solid feel. Uh, modular arms yeah just a you know a solid frame so uh, it is one that I really like it's kind of long um, it is big right it has to be big to kind of accommodate for this air unit in the back in addition to that you know you do have to obviously buy motors I got my uh, good venture drone motors here these are probably the nicest motors I've ever used they are super smooth, super powerful. These are their Stealth Pro 2306 and a half. Um, love these things. 25, 54 KVs. They'll fly these things uh, on 4 or 6S. That's, you know, your preference. Uh, I'm flying 4, 4S, right? Uh, there are some things you have to do in order to fly 6S. Now, you also need to add a flight controller. I've got the Holy Bro. Um, this is a Holy Bro Kahoot uh, F7 stack, and it's 92 bucks, I think, is what it ended up costing me. Uh, but this is actually built for a DJI unit, all right? You can see here, kind of hard to see, uh, but in here, this plugs right in. So it plugs from the back of the unit right into the flight controller here. Um, and I don't have to do any other, any other soldering other than my motors, which I had to obviously solder on here so building a dji quad is a process now it's actually a little bit easier than building most drones if you've never built a drone um you know i i just released a video on how to do this this is the tyro 119 it's a gps drone for 120 bucks you know this is probably the easiest thing to build and actually this and the dji if you buy one uh built for dji they're the easiest two quads to build because they're almost plug and play. You do have to solder uh, the motors on actually both of these, uh, but you know that's probably the easiest way to go. There are some, like I said, pre-made. If you want to just buy and fly, you can. But again, they're going to be expensive, so you have to keep that in mind. But you know these goggles. The picture coming out of these is so different than anything I've ever experienced. Um, you know, I'm going to show you some flight of me flying. I'm going to show you some flight of Ryan flying with these. Uh, but we both kind of had the same experience. It was, wow, that is unbelievable coming from, uh, you know, analog FPV. 
I did drop it here, crack the uh, casing on the antenna. So, uh, you know what, I thought, hey, uh, I can see what's in there. Um, you know, that's what the inside of the antenna looks like, probably a circular polarized in there. But yeah, these goggles, um, they're nice. They look super cool. Um, but honestly, they just don't fit nearly as nicely or snugly as, uh, you know, my Sky Zones or my Fat Sharks. Uh, they're kind of bulky. Um, you know, I think DJ probably could have done a better job of, uh, you know, these goggles. But, uh, hey, they are okay, right? But, uh, you know, for 500 bucks or what are they by themselves, I think they're $530? $530, yeah. Um, you know, they... I think they should be a little bit better fitting, but uh, you know, I don't know what is all going on in here, but whatever it is, it's pretty darn fantastic. Now this remote uh, actually looks and feels a lot like a Phantom remote. I should probably pull that one out uh, to compare, but you know, it has a standard DJI on off button. Uh, we do have a little bit of uh, extra switches here and there, um, and you can record uh, the, you know, the image from the goggles or on the air unit right here from the remote. So these are nice gimbals, good sticks. Uh, I do like the way it feels. And the range on this is just phenomenal. Um, it's, gosh, this, it really is a game changing deal. Once you've flown with this, it's gonna be hard to kind of go back and fly an analog drone. It just, it's so nice. And you know, the, uh, you don't have to buy this, right? You don't have to buy the remote. You could add your own receiver, but the air unit not only is a camera and a VTX, it's also a receiver if you have this DJI remote. So it is nice and it is pretty darn powerful and long range. I was getting range out of this thing that I absolutely do not on my XM plus. I was getting a uh, video quality range on this that I, I've never experienced before. Um, just the breakups are different, right? The flying with these goggles um, is it's just so different. It's it's kind of hard to, you know, if you haven't experienced it, you need to try because if you like FPV, this is a whole new world and uh, it's a good one. Uh, so yeah, you know, not cheap, but uh, definitely, definitely good. So uh, I'm anxious to see what else comes out. Are we going to get some three inch uh, quads um, from DJI? Are we going to get another five inch quad from DJI? I'd like to see DJI release their own drone. Uh, you know, maybe it's coming. I think they probably should just because, you know, building is not easy and it's not for everyone. And these goggles just make it so nice and, and accessible and easy to see. Just this setup can be so good. It's going to be really good for the hobby, I think. Um, gosh, what else? You know, changing channels here. You, you change in the goggles. It changes on the drone. You see the number on the side. There are just so many really nice things about this system aside from its initial cost, which is pretty darn expensive. But yeah, it's a good, uh, it's a good setup. Let's take a look at some flight and, uh, you know, you can kind of decide for yourself if you're ready to, to uh, pony up the dough. All right, so I'm gonna start by showing you the recorded view from the air unit. Now, this is going to be the best picture. Um, it is not exactly what you see in the goggles. I'll show you that here in a minute, uh, but it's really pretty darn nice. It's a good, crisp, clean image. I did not tweak a single setting, and you can do some of that. Uh, I just wanted to show you what the stock video looks like, and that's what you're getting here. Now, this is not me on the sticks. This is Ryan flying. He is uh, a much better freestyle pilot than me. Um, and when I handed him the goggles, his first reaction was, wow, like I can't believe this. Um, and that's pretty consistent with uh, everyone I've shared these goggles with. They put them on their face and they say, this is amazing. Now, what does it actually look like inside the goggles? Well, I'm gonna switch to that view here and you can kind of see there's a little bit of digital breakup or blockiness on the edges. Uh, I have this in focus mode, which allows you to kind of keep the center of the image crisp. So if there's any sort of, um, you know, interference or you're, or you're starting to lose a tiny bit of signal, it focuses on the center of the image. So you're not getting those digital lines going across, um, you know, across the whole screen. It's still very, very awesome and easy to fly. Now you can take it out of focus mode um, where you keep the image crisper and it'll kind of, you know, the difference then will, you'll lose a tiny bit of latency. Um, 
but you know, I'd rather have the crispness on the sticks um, and these tiny artifacts on the edges. Um, you know, that's kind of a personal preference. So we'll dive a little bit more into the settings in maybe a later video and talk a little bit more about the goggles, the system, the setup, the build, you know, is DJI going to release their own version of one of these? You know, who knows? Um, you know, one thing that, that I did is I use the air unit, not just as the VTX and the camera, but also as the receiver. And it's really pretty darn nice. At 700 milliwatts, you get incredible range. There is a mod, um, you know, a, a text file that you can upload into the goggles so that you can run it on a thousand or one watt, a thousand milliwatts, or even uh, 1200 milliwatts. So you can get even better range out of these goggles. So yeah, it's kind of comparable to Crossfire R, R9. Um, so if you're looking for a long range quad or you just want really great video quality, you can do that with this quad. Now, um, is the image coming out of the air unit going to be comparable with a say, say GoPro? No, um, you know, a, a GoPro is going to be a little bit better quality, but gosh, this is still pretty darn crisp. And really the thing is when you're flying, this is what you see, you know, um, it's pretty darn amazing that, you know, that they, they did this. Um, you know, you can kind of decide for yourself. It is expensive. You know, like I said, it's $129 for the fly more package. Um, you could just get the goggle. They have a goggle and two air units package for $819. The goggles themselves are 529. The remote itself is 299. The air unit is 179. Camera is 59. Uh, you can get the module uh, without the camera for 99. Um, you know, and then you get, guess you need the, the frame, uh, the iFly DC five is 50 bucks. The, uh, flight controller, uh, was 90. Um, and then the motors, you know, they're going to be 20 bucks a piece. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, watching the video here. Um, leave us a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. What do you think about this unit? Are you going to switch, uh, from, uh, what you currently have to digital or, you know, is it just too much money? And that's, you know, a reality for a lot of people. It is darn expensive, but it's solid. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you hit us a, a like, subscribe if you want to see more content, and hit us up on halfchrome.com or the drone DJ. Good luck and happy flying.